Okay. So I put my probe a little bit lower than I would otherwise start. I just go and identify the compartment. So I start quite lateral. I find, uh, I find the lateral border of the, there, the fascia lateralis there. This is your compartment end there. So anything, this is posterior is going to your right at this, in the picture. So this is the uh, lateral compartment. So this must be there for I'm um, quite pro uh, proximal uh, biceps compartment. And I, if I push, you can see the fascial planes quite nicely. So I go a bit more medially. I follow the fascial plane, identify the sciatic nerve as a nice big nodule in the fascia plane. And normally on top of there is the conjoint tendon, in this case also visible. And you can, again, you, if you push it, you can, you can sometimes differentiate better the structures. Then you follow that fascial plane. And again, you just follow it, follow it, follow it more immediately. There it comes, there, there. And we're going to go a bit more to the side. And then here is the end of that compartment. And there should not really be any membranosis yet, but there's a little muscle belly there. So it might be that I'm already distal enough to see the muscle belly of the semi-membranosis. If I start again, if I see this muscle here, and I think it's the semi-membranosis, um, I just bring it up proximally, and that little muscle belly should then disappear, um, proving its point that as we go proximal, there is no muscle left of the semi-membranosis. So then we just go on the fascial plane itself there. Yeah? And there's the nodule, that's the, t that's the tendon of the semi-membranosis. So if I now start from the medial side, I have, <coughs> I have sort of shown that there is no belly yet. So I'm going to start from the medial side, follow the fascial plane. There is the semi-membranosis tendon there in the fascial plane. Follow that fascial plane once more. Then we identify the sciatic nerve in the fascial plane. If that's the case, we look for the conjoint tendon on top. <coughs> and if that's the case, we just follow the, the compartment to its end. And if we squeeze it, in this case where I am now, that compartment stops there. So I've identified the, the structures I wanted. And, and so now we can start examining. So if we just pick up a, 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 a structure, say the sciatic nerve with the conjoint tendon on top, the conjoint tendon is here, so we follow these two guys up. And as we said, if, if that's the case, then if I bring it a bit more into the picture, this conjoint tendon starts to sort of move in, in, in a way with, with the semimembranosis tendon. They get closer to each other as we go proximal. So here's your semimembers, there's the conjoint tendon. As we go up, there's the semimember, there's the semitendon or biceps, conjoint tendon, and now they're lying here and here. So they're getting closer pretty much on top of each other. And as I go higher, let me see if I can keep them both in view. So they make an, uh, so there's one, there's the other, and we just see if I can trace them to the, to the top. So here, this is the biceps conjoint tendon where my cursor is, hitting the bone, <coughs> coming up, all the way up there. Not the greatest picture. Let me see if I can identify it a bit better if I go to the side there. Now we're on top, conjoint tendon. The same membranosis would lie down there. So if we come back up, back down again, I can just trace them again. There, there we were. Follow it through, follow it through. There's the conjoint tendon again. There's the same membranosis again. So we'll load it up maybe slightly more. Once more. So we're now, we're now distally, and we're going to go once more proximal. Medial is on the right, lateral is on the, on the left. Conjoint tendon, semimembranosis tendon. Let's, let's follow the semimembranosis. So now they lie on top of each other here. Conjoint, semi mem. Can keep going. Now they're still on top of each other. Now they're still on top of each other. Semi mem is here. And I have to work it a bit harder to get closer to the bone. So now it starts to get a bit more oblique. So here, there's this conjoint, there's the semi mem. And now we just start hitting the bone. And then there's the big chunky one. And then we can go back one last time and just follow them out and follow them in. <coughs> yeah? Sacral tubular ligament would be on top here, but you can't normally identify that separately. That's that one there. So you look for bony irregularities, you look for the footprint, and then we go back where we were slowly. There's that one, there's the other guy, and then we go back distally where we started, so they start separating each other again, and they find their own little place where we were earlier where we started. Okay, so we have, we have sort of gone up and back where we started with those two tendons. You can do the same with the sciatic nerve, um, it just depends a bit where you want to go. You can follow the sciatic nerve in its fascial plane, in its fascial plane, make it a bit brighter. And then you should be able to go even further than where you, there it is, and you follow it through. Yeah, and then there's a tendon orientation there. So for now, we just go back to where we've started in that plane. Okay.
So we got them again, sciatic nerve, conjoint tendon, same remember nodes. Let's go to the medial side first. Now, we, we already saw that muscle belly because we just identified it earlier. So you need to be able to screen it from its beginning. So find it and appreciate it's getting bigger. Some of the injuries happen here where the musculotendinous junction is. There's the tendon, there's the muscle belly, and it just gets bigger and bigger. There's the tendon here in the corner, there's the muscle belly next to it. Still following nicely, you can follow it down, you can follow it down. And again, you can palpate, you can push, you can stretch, you can do anything you want with it. There it goes, all the way down, all the way down. And here, you can see the tendon starts to go from a rounded structure into a more facial or intramuscular tendon structure. See, there. Still follow it up. Here is the tendon in the muscle. And we're now getting quite close to the knee already because you can see the semi-tendon nose is on top. So if I trace it back in, you see again how the, the semi membranosus tendon forms from that fascial, uh, intramuscular fascia. And it just forms, forms a nice little module as we go up. And we can see that beautifully sort of working its way out. Okay? So that's the semi membranosus. If we then go to the, the next one, so we just come up a little bit more until we see the semi membranosus belly going. There, boom. That was the tendon, as we noticed here earlier. So now we go to the semi tendinosis, and we were talking about that uh, intramuscular uh, septum or the strata, which is normally starting in this corner here, and as we go distally, it would expand into the muscle. So if we have it identified, if I go up and down, you can see that nicely following through the screen that way. So as I go distally, it goes more into the muscle, approximately it disappears back into the corner there. Slowly, just follow it through. Sometimes it helps if you push, because then you can see more of the fascial plane there. Continue, it's now very much in the middle, working its way almost to the biceps now there, and still there. So you can follow that through, follow that through. Just follow the anatomy, because there's some variations in there, but you can see it's nicely there. And now it starts to get a bit harder to find, because it's sort of slowly disappearing. If I go proximal, it forms back into where we were all the way through. Okay, so we've examined sort of the semi tendinosus biceps. If you just follow that down a little bit, you can just see how the tendon fibers start to become more facial fibers or intramuscular tendon fibers, and it just disappears. And if you go proximal, just look at how all these muscle fibers sort of point towards the tendon. Everything sort of moves, moves here to where my cursor is. The anatomy is nicely forming in front of your eyes when you do that. And as you go higher, that forms a nice little tendon in the muscle. Okay? Okay. So now look at the uh, short and long head of the biceps on the lateral side. So we were, we have already identified the, the lateral, this is the vastus lateralis, this is the fascial plane between the vastus lateralis and what well, is the biceps, we're quite proximal. So what we expect if we go distally is to see a, a, a column of muscle between those two muscles coming up here. So this fascial plane would start to change and there will be a muscle pushing itself, so it's here now. And if you're not sure, if I push, if you, you can see there are actually three compartments now, and that is the short head, yeah? And if I bring it back up again, you can see now we're in one. From a palpation point of view, it's always quite interesting. If you, if you, if you find that start of the short head, put your finger in and just appreciate where the orientation within the, the posterior thigh, you're actually talking about the start of the uh, short head of the biceps. It's quite interesting. Most people would judge it to be in a different place. So as you go distally, these fascial planes, these fascial lines here, like I said, we call them tram lines because you can, you can line them up. If I push it, they become more horizontal, this, this, this column now, which is a nice way to assess the fascial plane and, and also the corner here, which is where some of the injuries will occur. There's the T-junction here, which is the, the long head of the biceps and the short head of the biceps. If you don't push very hard, the column is more vertical and, and that's a little pitfall because some people then think, oh, where, where's my, my short head gone? And again, you can do the trick of pushing, but it's much easier to just try to get the fascial plane more flattened out, and then you see them nice and bright. Okay? And so uh, pushing constantly is a good idea, especially if you have uh, people who have had a recurrent injury where there's scar <coughs> tissue or changes in the normal anatomy. You, just, you can just identify it much better. And for reference, there's your sciatic nerve as well. So, when we have those compartments identified and we go towards the knee, which we are doing, we expect the short head to stay nice and big and the long head, which is a bit more posterior, to get shorter and shorter. And again, just appreciate how all these fibers draw into this corner here. As we go distally, that long head is becoming more and more anterior fascia and becomes part of the tendon that sits now here. 
and the short head is still going on for a little while, so we follow this up. I put it in the middle, the, the arterial fascia, because that's where the tendon already is forming. So now the muscle belly of the, the short head is also drawing all the fibers towards that tendon. But we're getting very close to the knee, you can see it there. But we follow it, there's, the, there's the, the tendon, there's the muscle belly underneath it. We follow it through, there's the tendon, the muscle belly is almost disappearing now. There's the tendon, there's, there, this is the tendon now. And we go and continue, there's the tendon still. And then we go and we hit the fibula nicely in a cross section, okay? And it's that bit, just before you hit the fibula, that uh, it, it crosses through the LCL cross crosses through a little bit. You get it? Um, and we can probably do that in, in, the, in the practical maybe a bit more because then you can isolate the LCL nicely in a long, longitudinal section and then see how the biceps interact with that picture that you then get. If you, if you have the LCL, it often is on the, on the distal part. It looks a bit thicker around the LCL, which is basically the, the, the tendon of the biceps of coming through. On, the, on this one, it's actually not, not, not too bad at all. The orientation, you would have to look... It looks a bit fuzzy normally, so the fibers of the LCL go through, and then what, what looks on both sides here is the biceps tendon coming through here and here on either side. So that's the, the round trip. So the trick is to find your markers on the soft tissues and then really carefully just individually trace every structure and have a few places where you can go back <laughs> if you lose the plot. Okay, we're going to do lateral hip, if you have time for that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do the adductor magnus. If we do the, you find the posterior, sorry, the, the medial border again. And that's, so here we were, that's the semimembranosus tendon. There's the semimembranosus belly. So the magnus is basically all here. Now I can't immediately see a tendon, it should be about there-ish. So I'm going to just trace it and see if I can find how it behaves as I come up. So it's here, come up, come up, come up. Come up, there it is, the little nodule, and then come up, and then come up. I'm pushing quite hard, I'm afraid, to get it there. And then here, here's the footprint, not the greatest picture, but that's the footprint of the adductor magnus. If I come back again, the way I've done it is I just, I just follow that fascial plane on the medial side, and at one point it starts to become a tendon. If I push a bit, I now see that that's, that's a harder structure there. So once, once I've got my arm, that little nodule, and it is an individual tendon, then it's slightly easier to identify and then all the way up to this bony attachment. So this is a bit more medial, yeah? But it's not, it's, it's not uncommon at all to find no tendon structure immediately there. Just follow it up. So that's your landmark there. Right there, the yeah. Yeah, so again, just that border there. You follow it up <laughs> until a little bit higher up, there will be the tendon coming in, and then just go it up. Sorry. Yeah? Um, lateral hip. Would you mind just lying on your side, facing me? Thanks. Put your, put your legs down, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to have to just put a roll between your knees, just in case I need it. I just put a roll between his knees, so it's a bit more relaxed, the tissues here, that makes it easy for me to probe, put my probe position in, in place if I need to. Okay, let's see if this is okay. Okay, so you start a little bit more distal than you, than you probably want to be. Just identify the bone in a cross section. Posterior is on your right side, anterior is on your left side. And then we just trace it proximal and we're looking to see if we can find our, our bony landmarks. So we look for the anterior facet and then we take it from there. There's your anterior facet because it's a, convex, a concave uh, um, bone contour. So that's the footprint of the minimus on top. If that's the case, then if we go more, more lateral and posterior, sorry, more posteriorly, we should get this convex area there, and that's then basically your lateral uh, facet. So if we go back to the, the anterior uh, facet, that's the cross section, uh, tensor fasciolata on top. So you can do a spin on it, and you do it longitudinal once you get in that position. Again, you look for, I've turned it the other way now. No. Uh, you, you look for um, bony irregularities, and you just see if you can get that tendon nicely in place going through there. Come back, there's your tendon, 
there's your tendon coming back in to there. So cross section, do it once more cross section there. There, and there's your touch, attachment. There's the tendon, and then we draw it down. And then digs, digs deep in there, goes down there. There's your tendon going through. And there's the muscle bellies. There. Okay. So then we go back to cross section, and then we go to the lateral facet for the glute med medius. So that's the bit where we need to just be a little bit aware of our orientation. So we, we go here, we go straight posterior from there, and that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the footprint here of your uh, medius, but we want to line it up properly. So we're just going to do slowly sort of 37 degree, but we just try to get a parallel band of tissue. You can see if I don't, it's a bit, bit pointy there, so I just keep turning a little bit more, and then you get more of a parallel band of tissue. So it should be from here. <laughs> this is quite thin, that layer. It goes from there, it goes there, and it goes there. And if I'm there, then I should be able to see the posterior facet, which is that little bit more sloped appearance here. That's the posterior superior facet. So, so it gives it away a little bit if you have this parallel band of tissue. Parallel band of tissue, it's all parallel, it's all parallel. That's, and then you get the posterior facet there. So that's your, that's your transverse uh, view on the glute medius. Anterior band, posterior superior band. In the transverse plane. And if you, if you spin on it, so we do, the, we do the lateral part, the anterior part first. Let's see if I can get a, a nice picture on it there. And then it just goes digging in into the muscle layer there. Okay. And then we go back. I'll see if I can do posterior bit. So there's the posterior facet there. So I have to roll it a bit more all the way down there. So that's your cross section there. And then we just spin it from there. And we go onto it, tenor or sal area, and then we go up through there, there. Yeah? You get it? <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's your tendon, uh, posterior superior. So I can try to go and sweep through, and then that's your anterior band. So once you're in that longitudinal aspect, you should be able to just drive it forwards from one tendon to the other. It takes a little bit of, of working it for the tendon, because the tendon is so oblique, so you need to push hard. And that's this deep layer. Do you have time for the, are you, are you okay? Uh, yeah, so the, the superficial layer is, is the... Uh, Show the axis. Yeah, it's the, the superficial layer is the fasciolata on top. So here we, here we were the minimus, the tensor fasciolata on top, there's the fasciolata itself. Tensor Sorry? <laughs> oh, this one, sorry, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> it's on top, yeah. Sorry, yeah, you're right, thanks. Uh, point taken, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry. So, if, so, so if you have the layers uh, there, and you can see there the fasciolata, oops, going, and then we go to the posterior side there. So you want to see basically the deep layer going over the superficial layer. And can you just see if you can move your foot up for me? So do wait, 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 the other way. No, no, no. Bend, bend your knee, bend your knee, bend your knee, and then just do that one slowly. A few times, just slowly. No, not lifting your knee, just lifting your foot, like that. Yeah, let me just hold it still. So you can you keep doing that. So you can slide it and just investigate the two layers over each other. And there. Uh, and you can just go through. Yeah, if there's, just, if there's true burst of fluid, you have to trace it sometimes quite far posteriorly because sometimes the fluid will track quite far. So you need to be able to just follow it through, all the way through, and come back down. Okay, now relax. That's fine. Okay, so that, that helps if you let the patient do the work for most of the time, that is, that is enough to get a good view on it.